In this tutorial, let's see how we can create a simple sand simulation using uh, Fluid Lab. So here is an animation imported in FBX format from Mixamo. Now let's take a look at the scene setup. Here's a plane. And here's a sand emitter, uh, which is a cube modified to form this sort of a mesh. And here are the dimensions. And we have this model from Mixamo. And this is the animated mesh. Now let's duplicate this mesh and let's rename it as a proxy mesh. And while the proxy mesh is selected, let's reduce the mesh density. Here we have about 50,000 triangles. So let's um, add a decimate modifier on this mesh. And let's use collapse and use a ratio of 0.1. And as we can see, the triangles reduced to just 10%. Let's apply the decimate modifier. There we go. So let's hide the original mesh, and this is our proxy mesh. So let's use this proxy mesh in our fluid simulation for all the calculations. And while rendering, let's use this original mesh. So let's disable rendering on the proxy. So now let's start setting up the fluid simulation. First, let's start by adding colliders. Let's head to the colliders module and let's select the plane mesh and let's add selection collider. And here, uh, let's just refresh the damping and let's increase the friction to something like 0.17 and let's randomize the friction just a little bit. Next, let's select the proxy mesh and let's add selection collider on this proxy mesh. And let's add a little bit of stickiness because this would allow the particles to stick to the surface just a little bit before they fall off to the ground. So let's say 0 0.05. And here, let's reduce the damping just a little bit. And let's increase randomized damping to something like 0 0.05. And let's increase the friction. And let's also increase the randomized friction. Now, in order for the sand particles to be contained in sort of a box, we need a collider for the sand particles as well. So for that, let's duplicate the sand emitter and let's rename it as sand collider. And let's head to edit mode. And let's uh, select the top face and just move the top face in the Z direction just a little bit. And let's delete the top face. There we go. So this would be the collider for the sand particles. Now let's um, add a collider to the sand collider mesh. And here, uh, let's um, increase the friction a little bit. And let's add some random friction as well. Now let's um, hide the sand collider in the viewport. So now we have all the three colliders added, which is the plane mesh the actual animated Mixamo model and the sand collider. Now let's select the sand emitter and let's add new group. And let's add geometry as we would like all the particles to be emitted just once. And let's add emitter. 
And now let's head to fluid presets. And here let's select sand and set preset. So here all the parameters required for sand are populated here. So let's head to emission first and let's increase the resolution to something like 100. And let's head to physics and let's decrease the time step to 0 0.02 as this is a sand simulation and we would like it to simulate in slow mo. And let's decrease the subframes to 2 as that helps in speeding up the simulation. Now let's run a test simulation. Here there are a couple of issues. The first, particles are falling off the collider. And the second, particles are bouncing way off of the collider. So let's address these issues. So first, let's select the collider. And let's head to edit mode. And let's select the side face. And let's move it in the x direction just a little bit so that it covers all the particles. And let's hide it back again. And there we go. So now we don't see any particles falling off, so which is good. So for the bounce, what we can do is we can use an option called soft start. So here in soft start, when we give a frame start, let's say frame 25, so until frame 25, the drag and damping for these particles are modulated so that the simulation is much more smoother. And for the interaction radius, this is the actual fluid particle radius. So in order for sand simulation to be simulated properly, let's change the interaction radius to 0.9. And let's click Apply. And let's take a look. And there we go. The initial simulation is much more damped. And there we go. Let's take a look. Under spring, the default value for force is kept at 2. For the sand simulation, let's decrease it to 0.2. For better sand simulation, and let's rerun the simulation. Now here we can see that there is no unnecessary movement of the particles. So this behaves more like sand and less like fluid. So that's the advantage of using very less force. Looks good. So let's increase the resolution of the fluid simulation to something like 150. And let's run the simulation again. All right, let's take a look. Looks good. Let's click on current cache to bake so that the sim is baked. So that's the sand simulation we were looking for. Let's save the file. In order to achieve a good sand simulation, we need to balance the parameters of interaction radius and the spring force here. And this is the interaction radius. So 
as we change the numbers between interaction radius and the spring forces, we get different fluid simulations. And here is a compilation of how these two parameters affect a fluid simulation. So this is with an interaction radius of 2 and spring force of 2. And here, interaction radius of 2 with a spring force of 0 0.2. And here, with an interaction radius of 0 0.9 and spring force of 10. And here is the one we used in our tutorial, which is interaction radius of 0 0.9 and spring force of 0 0.2. So let's take a look. So here we can see that we get different results by varying these parameter values. So here, in this scenario, this is more like wet mud rather than sand. And the rest of the simulations, they look like sand. But the better one would be to use the interaction radius of 0 0.9 and spring force of 0 0.2. So this is what we used in our simulation tutorial. All right, now that we have the fluid sim, let's head to the mesh module and let's add a mesh. And let's add geometry node meshes to the sand emitter. And let's turn off the liquid mesh and let's click on grain and toggle the grain on. And here, let's increase the amount to one, which means all the particles that were simulated are present here. And let's change the minimum radius of the particle and maximum radius of the particle. Uh, let's change the minimum to 0 0.01 and let's change the maximum to 0 0.03. And let's hide the fluid particles. Now let's take a look. And there we go, that's the simulation. And here, we have a nice option in the Fluid Lab add-on called Extra Dots. So what this Extra Dots does is it adds more density to the simulation. So let's turn on Extra Dots. So here, the first random min-max indicates the random amounts of points for each simulated particle created using geometry nodes. So let's say the minimum number of points is 1, and the max number of points is 40. And let's say the probability of a simulated particle having these geometry node points is this number here. So let's increase the probability to 0 0.65. And here, this is the minimum radius of the geometry node point particle. So let's use the same number as we used for the original simulated particle let's say 0 0.03. And here we have something called separation XYZ. So let's toggle this icon here. And here we have the X parameter, Y parameter, and Z parameter. Let's take a look. Let's turn all of these to zero first. Now we can see that we're back to our original simulation. And here we can see that all the points that are generated through geometry nodes are located at the same location as the simulated particle. So let's offset them a little bit. Let's say 0 0.04 in the X. So here we are offsetting these particles. So we can see that here. And let's say we offset in the Y direction as well. Let's say by 0 0.04. And here we can see that in both X and Y, we have huge number of particles, which are actually geometry nodes points. And here in the Z, let's um, increase it to 0 0.01. And there we go. So now, this is with extra dots off, which is our original simulation. And this is with the extra dots on. Without taxing the system resources using extra dots, we can create more density of sand particles. And here, the motion magnitude, static threshold, and noise scale parameters help improve the look of the geometry node points. For example, the motion magnitude adds a random motion to the extra dots as long as the particles have velocity. 
That means while the particles are moving, the extra dots do not look static and have a more natural result in the simulation. Now let's do a viewport render for the sand simulation with extra dots. So let's head to rendering and let's head to viewport. And at 50%, let's do a flipbook render. Let's first save the file and let's save as grains. And let's do a flipbook render. And let's click on view render. And there we go. That's the sand simulation we were looking for. Let's save the file. All right, now let's go ahead to the shading module. And here, let's click on the Assign tab and let's assign sand material. And let's head to Cycles Preview. And there we go. So that's the sand simulation we were looking for. Hope you like this tutorial. Thank you and stay tuned for more tutorials.